What's up everyone, Chris at Dentless Touch. We are in our new facility and I'll show you more later on this month. But right now we have a Dodge Rebel here, brand new truck or at least brand new to the customer. And he received a gift over the weekend from another car door, uh, pretty much hitting into his door. So I wanted to just briefly go over the approach here. Uh, I wanted to take this whole door off the car, but after seeing the dent in person, uh, I think we're gonna do a combination of glue pulling and then whale telling. Uh, at the bottom of this door is a crash brace and I'll be able to leverage off of that just to gain some strength as I manipulate the metal back. Fun fact, the owner of this vehicle is in the body shop industry. Uh, he's a manager of a local body shop up here. So um, he chose PDR because quite frankly, it is the best option for damage like this. So let's get started with the repair. All right, so I've already glue pulled a little bit on this lower area here. And right now I'm gonna give this area right there some direction, then I'll start addressing the crown. Literally, I just pulled up any tab that I had just to see how strong it is. I have a little bit of time on my hands. So let's just see if we can get this to pull just a little bit. Now, a lot of guys will put a tab throughout the entire dent. I don't recommend that. That's just not my approach. Not saying that uh, it won't work. I just like to isolate where I uh, want metal to move. So again, I'm not trying to completely remove, you can see this tab didn't do anything. I'm not trying to completely remove the dent all in one shot. What I'm trying to do is give it direction. I know there's some tension because of this crown right here. And again, if I lift this up, give it some direction, I'll probably pull right here and right here with the glue tab. Then I'm gonna address this crown. The beauty about glue is just keeps your repairs clean. If you can start glue, you can get majority of it up and it just limits the amount of pushing that's needed. So you can see that the center of the dent, probably be hard to see from this angle, but the center of the dent has been like this. You see that the center of the den, I was actually pulling right there. It's, you can barely see it now on the camera. It's right there. So what I'm gonna do now is pull this deepest part and then address nothing but the crown. And you'll start seeing the shape of this dent come back uh, quite quickly. Now again, I keep saying this, I am not trying to pull this body line up and, and, and remove or repair this body line in one shot or even with glue. I'm just trying to give it direction so when I knock down that crown, all of that energy can go back into its place. If not, I actually will close up the dent and I don't want to do that. Probably see there, lessen the uh, the, the impact or the, uh, the amount of damage. And now it has a little bit of direction. All right, let's knock down these crowns. I want to stop and let you know I'm using this knockdown here, which you can't get anymore, but it was Dent Technologies. I thought he made pretty decent uh, products, but he's no longer in business. Um, so this is the knockdown that I'm using, and you'll probably see me go back and forth to different knock uh, blending hammers, sorry, uh, and knockdowns and tools. Now, for me, I have to bring as much information or as much value as I possibly can to the channel and to uh, my trainees. So I switch up with 
different uh, hammers, tools. I'm just, I'm just a sponge. So, so that way I can add more value to uh, you guys. So I'm not really using it because it's a better tool. I'm just using it so I can see the difference between uh, the tool that I, I, I prefer, which is my own blending hammer. But I, I don't want to be kind of pigeonholed to one way of thinking. So this is the reason why I just pulled this out, literally polished it, and um, so far it's doing pretty good. So I'm just going to stick with it. People look at us and uh, say, why are you using a hammer to take a dent out? Uh, and really think of, it, think of it like you jumping into a pool and those waves, that energy from you jumping into the pool, those waves disperse because of that impact. And that's pretty much what a dent does. Um, and so it creates these waves, which we call crowns. And we have to bring that energy back into one uh, area the lowest area. And I feel like it's best to do it uh, with a uniform kind of mindset. So you work one side to the other side. Um, so similar to you, if you were to record you jumping into a pool or a body of water, uh, if you hit the reverse button, that's kind of how you want to remove the dent. So if there's any high or low areas uh, you want to address, get the overall shape back, then you can just get to your uh, cleanup work, your cleanup time, which is roughly 80% of the work anyway, majority of the time. So that's why we use a hammer <laughs> or, or a knockdown, uh, or one of the reasons why we use a hammer or a knockdown. Also to clarify why I am using two lights, you guys are looking at one light, which is this one right here. It's bouncing off the panel and then obviously my light so I can see. I feel like this best because if not, we'll be blocking each other uh, so you guys can see what I'm working on and I can actually see what I'm working on. So that is the only reason for the dual lights, if you didn't know. <laughs> All right, I think it's ready to push. Um, we're at this point where there's really not much blending. It's starting to get tight up here. So I want to give this area some direction. I could glue pull it, but I'm at the top part needs to be pushed. This, obviously, the body line needs to be pushed. And so I might as well just push the crease also, give it some direction. So we'll see if it's too tight, then I'll go back to glue to keep it clean. Uh, but I don't think so. Um, just so you guys know, we're gonna use a whale tail from Ultra Dent Tools. They recently just kind of revamped their tools. I'll give you the part number. You can always call them and see if they have something similar to what I have right here. And so this is a FT08. Um, and it's nice that they put their, the um, part number on the tools and it actually lasts. So um, this is, again, a one inch well tail, real thin. Love the Ultra Tools. Um, they're one of my favorite well tails on, alongside of the Dentcraft well tails. So this is just my, my tool. It's already bent to kind, of comp, to kind of go with the curvature of the door. It's already bent to kind of go with the curvature of the door. So it just makes perfect sense. So let's get pushing.
Oh man, hilarious. Let's go, let's party. Hey guys, Chris at Dentless Touch. If you're interested in learning paintless dent repair, we now offer a one-on-one -on -one course. Link will be in the description below. Now back to the video. I don't need to go any further with the detailing because it will get a uh, wash and wax right after me. So, but I wanted to show you guys the finished product before we head out of here. Uh, so let me grab the camera and show you guys. All right, guys, I want to thank you for watching this uh, breakdown of dip repair on this beautiful Dodge uh, Ram Rebel. So, hopefully, you enjoyed yourself and it's been informative. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.